Greetings, M squared here. Today we are going to start our talk about quadratic functions. So this is the first section. So we're really going to just hit the basics. We're not going to be shifting left and right in this video. We're just going to say what that A does. So first we want to start out with our quadratic parent function. So a parent function is the most simplest form of a function. It doesn't, ha it doesn't move at all like left, right. It's not reflected, not compressed, not anything changed, just a plain old pure and simple parent function. So it's actually called the simplest form of the quadratic um, function family. It's the simplest graph. And we call the graph, when we graph it, we call it a parabola. And it looks like this, or like this. It can be skinnier, fatter, shifted, but that's the basic shape, a U. It either opens up or it opens down. So we are going to just make a little t-chart for just the parent function. So the parent function doesn't have anything multiplied by it or added to it. It's just x squared. So negative 2 squared, remember, is negative 2 times negative 2. So that's 4, positive 4. So our point would be negative 2, 4. And negative 1 squared would be 1. So I have negative 1, 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. So here are the points just from negative 2 to 4, the, in, the integer points. Um, when I plug those x's in, what do I get out for y? What I want you to notice is the y. What's happening? That's like our f of x, right? What's happening to f of x? Well, here it's decreasing. So I want you to notice it's decreasing. And then here it starts to increase again. So that's different than linear functions, which we were working with before. Because linear functions is a constant rate of change. But you'll notice that this is decreasing and increasing. And this goes from 4 to 3, and then 1 to 0. There's 3 between here. right? There's 3, then there's 1. And I'm going down, and then I'm going up, and there's 1 and 3. So you notice there's kind of a pattern there, but it does decrease and then increase. We're going to graph these points now. So we're going to go over negative 2. We're going to go up to 4. Then negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 3. So I want you to kind of notice this pattern, because this always happens in a parent function when there's nothing multiplied by it in front of it. When your a, remember our a, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. That's our function. Now, I'm only talking about a today, but we'll talk about b and c later. But this is what makes it shift up and down open up or down, and this is also what makes it vertically compressed or vertically stretched. So when a is 1, because that's our parent function, when a is 1, I want you to notice that pattern. The vertex, which is right here, I went over 1 and up 1, over 1 and up 1. So Some of these words you've heard before. Vertex, the axis of symmetry goes right down the middle. It's an equation. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But I want you to notice that pattern, because it's going to come up a lot. and It's going to be much more helpful if you remember that little pattern. So we're going to talk about some key features. Vertex. Vertex is the turning point of the graph. So you'll see if I'm going from left to right, which is what I'm doing on my graph always, I'm going to go down. I'm going to get to the turning point or the vertex, and then I start going up again. So that, in this case, when the parabola opens up, this is called a minimum. If the parabola was opening down from left to right, I'm going up. I hit my maximum, the high point of the graph, which is the vertex, and then I go down. So the vertex is always the minimum or the maximum of the graph. The axis of symmetry is a line. Don't forget it's a line, because if I ask you, it's supposed to say is, if I ask you what the axis of symmetry is, and you just give me a number, that's a problem. You have to have an equation of a line, and it goes through the vertex. That's super important that you remember that, because that's going to make it easier for you to figure out what the axis of symmetry is. So up here, our axis of symmetry was x equals 0. Here, we don't know. If that was like a 2, then it would be x equals 2. But we're only doing parabolas that open up and down. In Algebra 2, you start turning them sideways, left and right. But we're not going to do that. So for our parabolas, the axis of symmetry will always be an equation that says x equals. So it's always going to be a vertical line. When they're sideways, it's always a horizontal line, but we're not doing those. So remember, it's always going to be an x equals. So we're going to talk about what makes a parabola open up or open down, and it's all about a. When a is less than 0, that means if this number out here is negative, we're going to have a sad parabola. 
So when it's negative, do you see the sad face? Oh, that's so sad. And when it's positive, it opens up. So when it's positive, it opens up. Oh, look, it's so happy now. Positive people are happy. Positive parabolas are happy too. So here we go. On these problems, all I want to know is does it open up or down? Now you can say up or down, you can write it, or you can just show me a picture. Great. Right? So I see a 3. That's positive. So I know it opens up. I can say up, or I can just do the picture. That's a negative. So I know it opens down. Positive, because it's a 1. Positive. Positive. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm just asking, does it open one or up or down? And since I see a negative right there, I know it opens down. Right here, I don't look at this guy. I only look at A. A is always in front of X squared. That's a 4. So I know it's positive and opens up and down. I don't look at the 16. I look at the X squared. The number in front of the X squared is A. That's negative. It opens down. That's positive, but that's not X squared. This is x squared. So I look right there, it's negative, so I know it opens down. So that is how you determine whether the parabola is going up or down. Now, next, what else does A do? A does something else. A tells us whether it's vertically compressed or vertically stretched. So vertically compressed is like if I take my parabola and I squash it down from the top. That's vertically. So it's going to look more like this. It's going to look a little wider. But vertically stretched is like if I take those two and I pull them up, so it's going to look a little bit skinnier. So this is vertically stretched, and that's when A is bigger than 1, the absolute value. So we're not going to talk about the negative and positive here, because that tells us whether it opens up or down. So I take the absolute value of A, so I ignore the negative sign, basically, and that tells me whether it's stretched or compressed. OK, so let's do some more there. So 1 fourth. Is that between 0 and 1 or bigger than 1? It's between 0 and 1. That means I'm vertically compressed. So vertically compressed. So I'm going to use vertically stretched. I'm going to say VS and vertically compressed. I'm going to say VC. That helps me save time. So you don't have to watch this video as long. Point 3, is that between 0 and 1 or bigger than 1? It's between 0 and 1. So that's vertically compressed. 1.6, that's bigger than 1, so that's vertically stretched. 12 is definitely bigger than 1, vertically stretched. 2 sevenths, 2 sevenths is less than 7 sevenths, which have been a 1, so that's between 0 and 1, so that's vertically compressed. 5 halves, well, that's bigger than 2 halves, which would be 1. So remember, we don't care about the negative. That does tell us it's upside down, but I'm just asking, is it vertically stretched or compressed? And this is definitely vertically stretched, because vertically stretched, it's bigger than 0. I'm sorry. That's terrible. That's supposed to say bigger than 1. My apologies. I've been saying it, but that up there was wrong. So vert bigger than 1. Oh, my. All right. That's what happens sometimes. OK, here we go. Domain and range. Let's talk about domain and range real quick. Now, you should know this from previously, because we did this with absolute values already this year. Domain is the possible values, um, possible x values. Range is the possible y values. So what is the domain and range of the following? So x values. It goes left forever and right forever. That means the domain is all real numbers because domain is all about left and right, and this is about up and down. So range starts here, but doesn't go up. It's right, the top of it is at negative 1, and then it goes down. So it's y, all the y's that are less than or equal to negative 1, because I go to my maximum, and I know it goes down. The next part on this is asking if it's increasing or decreasing on a given interval. So I'm saying from negative 5 to 3. So negative 5 is somewhere over there and then to right here. So it's asking about this part of the graph. So I go from left to right and I ask myself, am I going up or down? Well, definitely going up on that. So this interval, f of x, is increasing. So I say increasing. All righty. So I need to know the domain and range. Domain, x is going left forever and right, right forever. Um, so that's all real numbers. I hope you're figuring out that on all parabolas that we're going to do, because we're not doing left and right parabolas, we're just doing up and down parabolas, 
it's always going to be all real numbers. So that's like a no-brainer. You don't want to mess that one up. You want to recognize it's going left and right forever, always, whether it's upside down or right side up. Range, however, is different. So right here is where it starts, and then it goes up. So that's 2. So we're going to say y is greater than or equal to 2. And then it's asking from negative 3 to positive 1, this interval right here, is my graph going up or down? Well, if I hit the graph, I'm going down. So I would say decreasing. All right. So, two, oh, let's do the domain and range. <laughs> domain, all real numbers. Domain, all real numbers. Remember, that's just how it is with parabolas, like the ones we're doing. Okay, range. Then we have a pro we have a problem because there's a problem with our range, right? It doesn't go up and down forever. This one starting right here, it looks like at one. So we'd say y is less than or equal to one. And this one over here, we'll do it at the same time. It looks like four. It looks like it's going up, so we'd say greater than or equal to four. And then we're going to look at our little interval from two to four. Well, I went a little farther, and from two to four, it looks like it's decreasing. And over here, from negative two to 1. So it looks like over here, it looks like we're increasing. Increasing. All right. So it's asking us some other questions. What is the vertex of graph number 1? So I go over here, vertex. Looks like I'm over 4 and down 1. So that's 4 comma negative 1. We'll write it as a point. What is the axis of symmetry of graph number two? So I come over here and I look. It's that line that goes right through, that vertical line that goes right through the center. And I mean the vertex. And it looks like one. So I say x equals one. What is the vertex of graph number four? So that's this point right here. It looks like I'm negative three, four. Remember, you're gonna graph you're gonna write it as a point. And finally, what is the axis of symmetry of graph number four? It looks like it's right through negative 3, so x equals negative 3. And that is the basic beginning of these quadratic functions. That should help you with your homework, so good luck with that. M squared, signing out.